it's it's so important in the development of skill in meditation to get to that place where you're not constantly forgetting your meditation object and having mind wandering take place. So, uh, and, and that uh, it's it's very it's very important to reach that stage because that's actually where all of the good stuff in meditation begins. And uh, it uh, can, for some people, can be a challenge and take some time. So, one thing is very important to keep in mind is that the worst thing that you can do for yourself is to judge the quality of your meditation based on the fact that you uh, are become distracted uh, or that you forget the meditation object or that you have mind wandering. These are completely normal. And, you know, it, meditation is called mind training. That's what, that's what the words actually mean if we go to the uh, Pali or the Sanskrit. And the significance of that is meditation is not something that you do because you don't have the power to do it. It's something your mind does and it will only do it if you skillfully train it, you know. And it's like if you're training a, a, a horse or a dog or an elephant, uh, you don't make them do anything. Instead, you train them, and then the end result is they do what you want. And it's the same kind of thing with meditation, is that you're training your mind. And it's the skill in training that produces the result. You're not forcing it. And, of course, you know, if you were trying to train an elephant, you wouldn't get very far by getting angry and being judgmental and everything else. And, and, and the idea that you would do that is absolutely absurd. But when we go to meditate, it's exactly what we do. You know, we, uh, we start off, I, I am going to make my mind stay on this meditation object. And then when it doesn't, uh, we either blame the self that we think we are, or else we blame the mind that went and didn't do what the self told it to. <laughs> and none of that's very helpful. So avoid any sort of negative state of mind. You want to be in a completely relaxed, peaceful, comfortable mood. And cultivate the idea always that your meditation time, that's, that's your time. That's special time. This is time to relax. Just time to do what's good for you. Not time that belongs to the rest of the world. So, so that There's already a sense of uh, of relaxed happiness that you that you bring to it that when you sit down. Aha, great! This is this is my time. Now you're going to train your mind, and your mind's going to do what it has done all your life. So all your life, your mind has uh, it dwells on one thing because that thing is interesting and important, and then it tends to jump around to other things, always looking to see if there's something more interesting and important. This is what happens all day long. It's very important. If it didn't happen, then we wouldn't function very well because we wouldn't put our limited capacity for conscious awareness on the things that were most valuable and important. So it's completely normal that your mind is always looking around to see if there's something more useful to do than what it's doing, or more important, or more satisfying, more rewarding, uh, or more dangerous, or, or more worthy of worrying, you know, you know, the kinds of things. I mean, is, that's, that's the nature of the distractions that capture our attention and cause us to forget the meditation object, is that they appear as more important. And two things happen. Uh, sometimes your attention when what you're attending to doesn't seem particularly important at all, when it's, it's, it's lost whatever importance it had, your mind actively your, uh, searches for something else. But the other thing is you're focused on your meditation object or in your daily life something else, and something else 
suddenly comes into your awareness, either externally because it's uh, you know some sensation that uh, captures your attention, or some thought. You suddenly remember something you were supposed to do, or that sort of thing. So this is the normal state of affairs, and when you sit down to meditate, you'll experience both of those. As soon as some sense of, uh, uh, you know, well, this breath is the same as the last one, the one before and the one before that, therefore, time to look for something more interesting. And this is not that you consciously decide that, you don't. It's an unconscious mental process that does this all the time. It does its job. It starts looking for something more interesting. Or likewise, you're sitting there and you're meditating and all of a sudden you remember something or think of something that's important that comes into your mind. Uh, so that's completely normal. So you don't blame yourself for it. But it is also... Uh, Well, let's, let's look at this a little closer. What happens? So you're paying attention to the meditation object and you're, you're following your breath and you're with it. And then suddenly you find you're somewhere else and you've been there for quite a while. That's, that's the mind-wandering experience. Now what is really important about this is something happened that you remember that this isn't what you meant to be doing. You meant to be meditating. You meant to be keeping your attention on the meditation object. And that is what's important. So you don't want to negatively, you, you can't quash the mind's natural tendency to search for interesting objects. It just won't work through, through negative reinforcement. You can't quash that. What you can do though is positively reinforce your mind doing something else which is completely natural, which you have set an intention to observe the sensations of your breath, and there is some other unconscious process in your mind that notices that, hey, this is the intention, you know, like as if it was a sign, this is what we're doing this evening from 7.30 to 8.30, and it notices that, hey, that's not what we're doing. Sign says we're supposed to be doing this. And that's that intention. So what it does is that comes into your conscious awareness and you wake up to the fact that, oh, my mind's been wandering. So what you want to do is positively reinforce that. If you're training your mind, you want to, and, and your mind does something right that it can do a lot more of and do it better, you want to positively reinforce it. If your mind does something right, namely recognizing that mind wandering has occurred and you get angry with yourself well, all these different mental processes they don't know what they did wrong but they're going to try not to do it again so you're not you're not really going to help yourself by generating negative feelings when you realize that your mind has wandered instead positive feeling and not only that another aspect of this if you notice and i want you to notice when we meditate later this evening uh, if you uh, try to try to stay on top of what's actually happening in your mind, that when you tend to lose focus is when a higher level of consciousness is not there. When you're totally just observing the sensations of the breath, but you're not in that state of knowing that you're observing the sensations of the breath, you're very vulnerable to another thought comes along and the mind just automatically goes from the sensations of the breath to the thought. But when there is that higher order of consciousness so that you see what, what you, you know that you are observing the sensations of the breath, you're much less vulnerable to that. <coughs> 